Welcome to Urban Legend in Fire with your hosts, Mark Wall, Neil and Chris, and Bob. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Urbane Legend, the podcast which guides you gently by the hand through the back alleys of culture and stories and monsters and that, I guess. Uh, I am man who is currently sausage rich, Chris Flynn, and with me, as always, is the manager of the hottest new boy band to come out of Port Slade, it's Mr... Neil Herbert. Hi, Neil. How are you doing? How's your week been? Um, been good. Been good. Been, you know, cash rich but sausage poor, I'd say. So it's okay. an interesting conjunction of items here. Yeah, we can have a little chat about that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so, word on the street and on SoundCloud is that you are managing uh, the hottest new boy band to come out of Port Slade in some time. Is that is that true? Yeah, I mean, well, I would say probably the the biggest you know music sensation to ever come out of Port Slade. Really, and I don't say that lightly, Chris. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, yeah. So, um, what what's the band's name? Prince. He came from Port Slade, didn't he? Prince. David Bowie. Yeah, he's, he, he obviously started. Oh, he lived in Port Slade. Yeah, during, he lived on yeah, Bouncy Sig- Road. Yeah, during Ziggy Stardust phase. Yeah. And it's bigger. It's he's through Mick Mitt Ronson. Yeah, bigger than bigger he than all of that. Daydream. Yeah, bigger than, bigger yeah, than sh- all of that. Shaking Stevens. He Shaking was, um, Stevens, yeah. He was, born, he was born above the Iceland, yep. I believe. <laughs> yeah, Cliff Richard lived in My Lake in the 50s. Yeah. yeah that That's where was, he first uh, had El- Elvis at the... Uh, yeah, and Elvis, of course, famously... Um, at 7-Eleven in, on Boundary Road as well. Was famous, famously born on Fisher's Gate Station platform. Yes, yeah. So... Yeah, he used what, to... Used to uh, and then the old stag in the old village. All right, that's that's all of Port Slade I can remember. So what's what's the name of this hot new boy band? Um P O R. P O R. P O R. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, does that stand for anything? It was just like poor. Well, it can. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, Port Slade, Oratory. Oh, Regulators, is that what it stands for? Uh, Port Slads. Yeah, no, they're called. Um, it's it's very much. A, I mean, some might say this is a bit derivative, Chris, but they're called right. Slade. Called Slade. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is that is that not? I mean, pro- it, is that you, not you think they'll have some some branding issues? Um, well, He's you know, we've spoken to Noddy Holder about. Noddy Holder's gotten a bit upset. Right. You know, but. Let's just say, you know, we saw the sort of, you know... You know haven't, you, haven't you cleverly worked around that by having a Y in it? So, like, Slayer, but Slade. So you're using a Y to, to spell it. Uh, a Z, I believe, yeah. And a Z. Yeah. A Y and a Z. That's the sort of thing Slade did themselves as well, wasn't it? So that yeah. just made things worse. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. made him more furious. So but, so how many how many members are there in Slade? So, you know, uh, there are 15. 15 members, yeah, right? It's quite, it's quite busy. Yeah, it's, it's, quite... I mean, it's, a, it's kind of like a combination between um, so a boy group. band, um, kind of prog rock, um, yeah. death parliament, metal, um, Peruvian throat music, Wu Tang Clan, and a kind of Wu Tang Clan, and a kind of like you know, um, okay, no. orchestra. So there's 15 of them. Yeah, you know what we're going to do now. We're going to go through... They've all got a distinct image and brand, Chris. That's yeah, good. so we're going to go through each one of the 15 now and what their name <laughs> is and what their distinct image and brand is. Okay? Yep. And I'll count them down. So yes. go, go. So fire away. So there's Little Joey. He's little a Joey. cute one. Yeah. Cute one. Good a little, one. A little girls like him. Yeah. Um, there's B-Daps. <laughs> B-Daps, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a bit of a rough boy. You know, he's got some yeah, tats. Yeah. He's got some sunglasses. He wears them inside. Bit of leather going on, yeah. Nice. The Tito the mix of styles. Tito, Tito. He's just right. a fun lad. He's just, he's, not he's, not Tito Jackson. No, no, no. Just just calls, just goes by Tito. Okay, he's, yeah. he's Joker. Yeah, he's a Joker in the pack. Yeah, okay. he keeps everyone smiling. Nice. <laughs> not regretting fifteen at all. No, I'm sure no. you're not. Um, 
It's Big Rog. Big Rog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's a homely he's... looking lad. Do you know what I mean? And you kind of sometimes think, well, what's, what's he doing there? So he looks like a yeah. farmer. Yeah, he does look like a ruddy kind of like rural farmer. Kind of, you know, out from Somerset or something like that. Right. And what, what kind of... What, what wandering kind up of... and down the, down the downs. What kind of music? Where's the what kind of... Kind of... What kind of sort of music is he bringing to it? I mean, he's he's very much giving us the, the kind of the folk the folk vibe, the yeah. folk vibe, neat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, knitted Aaron sweaters and all that sort of stuff. Lovely. Yeah, okay. eleven more to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's eleven more to go now. Yep. Yeah, um, there's Tishy's McCluskey. Tishy's McCluskey. Yeah, definitely not naming. He's things, emotion, so I can he's see it on emo. My desk. Yeah, he's he's a kind of like emo kind right. of one. And then his twin, um, Tishy's Deluxe. So, <laughs> so they're, they're twins, but they have the same first name rather than second. Yes. Right. Unconventional. Okay, unconventional family. Are they, are they from South yeah. Korea? Um, no, no, no. But they uh, they are from a family of Wiccans. Okay, cool. Yeah, very, very at home with nature. Cool. Just a, just the nine to go then. Yep. There's um, the night elf. The night elf. Yes. <laughs> getting, getting weird. <laughs> getting weird, aren't they? He likes, he likes hanging around forests at, at night. And, uh, <laughs> What's that got with to do with the music? Um, Pan pipes, right? Okay, next. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> He's the Peruvian throat singer. Okay, good. Um, well, we're nearly yeah. halfway there now. We're nearly halfway there. Okay, cool. Um, so those are the obscure ones. So presumably the the, the final yes, eight are the what, ones that really kind of stick the out. Real core, real core it's of the, uh, core, the group. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't run out of ideas at all. There's, um, yeah, there's. Well hydrated Tim. Well hydrated Tim, good. Yeah. What's so he's dressed he's, as a doctor. He just looks really kind of like clean and healthy. Do you know what I mean? You can tell he's yeah. you can tell he gets his fibre. You can, uh, you know, yeah. he has his eight glasses of water a day. He's a sensible lad, but you can't. Okay. You know, he, That's good. Well, look, for someone it. you can take home to your parents. No, no, exactly. Yeah, you know, you can someone you can rely on. Yeah, they're always going to have a pen. Always yep. going to have some sensible advice for you, but never judge you. Do you know what I mean? Yep, it's got always good, always good for a blue note if you're short. Yep. Okay. There's engineer Sam. Engineer Sam. I mean, yeah. a lot of these sound like kids. kids yeah, they don't. don't know. <laughs> it's slide roll for some reason. I mean, less less sort of Wu Tang Clan, more CBBS at the moment. I mean, this. What can I say? This is what. Oh, know, it's very gee, you know, it's a very pure our world that we live in. This is oh, okay, this fair is enough. Yeah. I can't, you know, I can't tell you what sales. Yeah, we don't know, probably wouldn't get blown anywhere. Up on sound. Well, exactly, they wouldn't get anywhere, and that's not not so. Well, so, what does thing. engineer Tim do? He just makes sure that all of the, uh, you know, any instruments. Instru- he, he can, um, he can, he can play a mean banjo. Um, okay, okay, cool, fine. We've, got, we've, we've we've led heavily into wacky here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this we talk is. So come on, final six. Make them, make them strong from your memory of them. Yes. Oh, now, okay. At the so... moment, at the moment, I'll be honest with you, I'm not seeing it. But like, I'm presumably the last well, six I mean... will really, really wake, you know, really open my eyes. These are presumably the background characters. Well, you'd, you'd think, but they're probably some of the <laughs> stronger ones that I could think of. It actually um, gets worse. <laughs> you know, believe you me, if you think we've reached the bottom of the barrel, then uh, you've got no idea. Um, okay, so then, so there's a... Uh, Are you looking around at stuff to come up with names? <laughs> I was going to say Garincha, but I think he's a footballer from the sex. That's he's fine. A... Garincha, yeah. right. Yeah. So he's, he's the so, Samba guy. Samba, yeah, you know. Yeah, fruit on his head. No, he didn't do any of that. He's, good, good bicycle kick, though. But not that that's relevant to the music scene, obviously. But uh, Good in the videos. Yeah, you know. He, he does capoeira. Cool. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, he does a bit of dancing, stuff like that. Right. Um, final five now. Easy. Final roll, five, roll, yeah. roll off the tongue. Yeah, uh, sick Eric. Sick Eric, because yeah. he's the rapper, he, he, Yeah, he's a... Well, no, he, he, uh, he produces and writes all the sick beats, you see, Chris. Oh, okay. He's like yeah. um, RZA. Yeah, if you like. Or, yeah, okay. Uh, the Foundation. The Foundation. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very good. Um, um, he's our he's our drummer. The drummer yeah, keeps nice. stuff going, keeps stuff going through round. Yeah, but build on um, build on his beats. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Rock solid. The bassist. Rocks. Okay, we're just going into the building world now. Okay. Yeah. Seems <laughs> seems, seems yeah. to be a theme. 
the bricklayer and John Hot Carrier. <laughs> yep, and then there's <laughs> yeah, Hods McTwo and Hods um, McTwo. He's our, he's our, you know, he's Hods, a trumpet Hods player, Mc, presumably. Hods McTwo turns. Uh, he's a, he's a one of the lead singers. Oh, okay. So the two part, nothing to do with it. No, well, actually, he has some flatulence problems. Oh, okay, great. Well, it's, it's good that he's, it's good that he's he's opening up a, a public conversation about it. Well, you know, irritable bowel syndrome is nothing to be ashamed of, Chris. Tell me about it. You know, so he's he's lent heavily into that with his uh, with his little yep. trademark name. And so, so the, and, and, and finally, the well, main person who you think might go off and do a solo career. Yeah, so that'll be you know that's our lead guitarist. Oh, okay. Um, Not the same. So, <laughs> Well, you know, I think I think our top five, they've all got some, if I could remember any of what I've said, then I think yeah. we've all got potential. The foundation. But yeah, but ra- Razor Edge. Razor Edge. Yeah. He's like the edge, but he's on the razor's edge. Okay. And what's his look? Sharp. Sharp. Modern. Mod. Yeah. Okay, great. No um, hair, so... Um, and so what's... Sharp what's the, haircut. What's the first single going to be that you, that you bring out from the Fabulous album? Um, it's going to be a remake of Do They Know It's Christmas. <laughs> hey, well, can't, it's blowing up SoundCloud. I, I can't explain it, Chris. I don't, you know, this isn't a manufactured, this isn't some desperate manufactured band that we well, got like you 40, know, 50 downloads at the moment. Appeal to, um, we're getting into double figures slowly. <laughs> Well, certainly that, well, that is the biggest boy band to come out of Portland. I mean, you know, there's more than double figures in the band, so that might explain where. <laughs> well, I mean, to some of them. I did tell the lads not to download it themselves, so we get sort of fair numbers, but, you know, well, they've, assured, well, they've assured me that the algorithm doesn't lost. judge. But, you know, it's chaos trying to manage 15 of these idiots. So, Yeah. yeah I think I'll be a millionaire by the end of the year, though. I'm confident. Good. Okay. Well, um, but... well that wasn't that was a waste I've of got time. No, I've got no further questions now. That sounds yeah, great. You re- regret that now, do you? No, I don't regret it. No, because I'm going to bring it back in a couple of weeks and ask you how specific members of the bands are doing. Well, that'll be a fun time for everyone. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe start making some notes now. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and so, Sausage Rich. Well, yes. you know, I, I feel like I'm even poorer now. So, um, mm. how, so I mean, what what kind of sausages are we talking about? Right. So, so the other day, favorite bit of chorizo. I was. Um, yeah, no, it's not that. Now, the okay. other day I was in the supermarket and uh, there were two 12 packs of Richmond sausages oh, Richmond. On, the, on their sell by date. So they were massively reduced. Yeah, get them in the freezer. Got, we got, yep, yeah, got them in the freezer. I took one pack out yesterday. And so this morning I cooked up 12 sausages. So I've got, I've got sausages like for weeks now, Neil. So. Got um, I ate some for breakfast, and then I might have some with my dinner and some in a sandwich tomorrow. It's nice, isn't it? Ooh. Do you like a sausage casserole, maybe? Nah, I quite like a sausage casserole. Um, I mean, the thing is, sausages produce quite a lot of fat. So you don't really want a very fatty casserole. No, no. Once you cook well, okay. Yeah. Once you cook them out, though. What would you have you in your sausage casserole, Neil? Would you have peppers? I would have some red peppers courgettes, and um, asparagus. What about courgettes? They can get a bit soft. Potatoes. Soiled. Potatoes, yeah. Asparagus would be a whole, right, but... Six whole onions. Yep. Six whole onions, <laughs> a tin of beans. Yeah. Uh, a... Some beef stock. Yeah. A butternut squash unpeeled. Yep. Pop that in the middle. Three three apples. Yep. Um, lamb's neck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Some pig trotters. Make it nice <laughs> and unctuous. Pig trotters. And. Um... Uh, some uh, gelatin to help it set. Yeah, you, know, you want to make a nice aspect out of it, don't you? Yeah, you want to have a nice aspect. Yeah, then you yeah. just you can cool it down. It in. Pop it in the fridge over there, and then just pop it in the fridge breakfast. over. Well, put, yeah, put mm. some oranges. Nice line a, breakfast jelly. Line a, line, line a nice uh, loaf tin with oranges, and then just pour it in there. Mm. Then you've got yourself a nice seventies meal. So you're coming around to it now, aren't you? No, not so. <laughs> You're but yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, I'll be honest, mine wasn't this exciting as yours, unless you want me to name all the sausages, but no one wants I that. did briefly <laughs> think about making you do 15 meals, but I thought, well, just, 
we won't try everyone's patience with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, mine's not as exciting. But uh, your one did go on, so we've pretty much we've yeah, fulfilled our time. Quite we've so. fulfilled our obligations. So uh, <laughs> let's let's move on to the meat, if I can. Of the yeah, uh, and, it's your yeah one. and you know, and, and again, there's another vampire one, I believe. This yeah, this another week. vampire nil. And what's our least popular topic? Vampires. Is that going to stop us doing them? Nope. Howdy doody. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> totally um, to be honest, like it, like we both come up with our topics before we knew what the other one was. So it's, it just happens yeah, it's to be a you know a vampire sandwich yeah. this time, and that's it can happen. You know, so a uh, hundred of these things. So yeah, so hey. yeah, and vampires have played a very small role. Um, yeah. So this vampire is a particular bit of enduring folklore from the city of New Orleans, you hear? New Orleans. New Orleans. Nice. And I can do that accent because no one from New Orleans listens because presumably they're too busy drinking bourbon and playing brass instruments. Well, rightly so. Hanging Quite around rightly so. Bourbon Square, is it? Was it Bourbon Street? Yeah, I maybe. Don't know. I've seen Treme quite a while back. Yeah, I still haven't. Um, I need to borrow the DVD off you, don't I? Yeah, I need to give you a lend. Um, so I'm going to be reading this off what looks like quite a big website now called Ancient Origins. Oh, um, that looks like a trademark, a well resourced, and uh, I just it's got a vibe of History Channel for some reason. No. Yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's available it in English, Spanish, and German. Oh, that's good. It is. Not French. That word out, all the not French. Yeah, I don't. I mean, how, how popular is French as language these days? Not, not more so than German. French. Yeah, actually, that makes sense. Yeah. Because like yeah. loads of Africa speaks French, um, and Indeed. some of Asia, uh, and human origins. Uh, what they're doing is they're reconstructing the story of humanity's past. Which I mean, it kind of makes me feel like there's ancient alien stuff in there. That's what it makes me feel. Yeah, like. is it going to be one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, Atlantis and all that nonsense? And I think so. I think it's us. got that kind yeah. of stuff. So, uh, looking at the website here as well, Neil, I'm not sure Ooh. if it's something you'd be interested in, but uh, there is unbelievably ancient origins. Uh, that's a registered trademark in case you're thinking of oh, yeah. ancient yeah. origin tours. And from uh, it's going to be a spin-off for the boy band, but yeah, the 18th to the 29th of August this year, they're going to ancient Greece, an unforgettable cultural immersion experience of Hellenic heritage. Hanil, if you're feeling cheeky, there's a little uh, 29th of August to the 3rd of uh, September add-on to have a little Ooh. look at Crete and Santorini as an I don't option. Mind if I do. Yeah, so. Um, the the basic package that's that's going to set you back four thousand six hundred ninety five dollars. Well, expect that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I assume you have your own ferry. <laughs> I feel like I you could actually do it. rely on the. I feel like schedules. I could do it cheaper, but I guess yeah. if you're retired and you haven't had any kids, then why not? Eh? Why not? Yeah, treat yourself. Why not? So, um, I'd say you know, uh, there's. Over twelve thousand articles on this website, so I feel that this is a well that I may dip into again oh, at nice. some point. Um, so today's story is I'm reading from ancientorigins.net, and if you're interested in the tour, uh, please give them the code Urban Legends Five, and um, you'll get no money off, but but we'll get fifty quid. So this was updated on the 28th of January last year by uh, Marita Crandall and a vampire in New Orleans, mm -hmm. the mysterious case of Jacques and the Comte de Saint-Germain. I was thinking, actually, yeah, it wasn't. It was Vampire in Brooklyn. It was that Eddie Murphy movie, wasn't it? Yeah, it's not yeah. that. No, it's not that. It's, it's, not, it's not Big Trouble in Little China either. Uh, it's, in, oh, it's, not it. rum, it's not Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> Oh, is it not even got no, no Jackie Chan in this? No, no Jackie Chan. Well, maybe. Well, we maybe. hope so. As always, Neil, I haven't read ahead. You can't have Eddie Murphy. At least have some Jackie Chan. Okay, well, we'll see what we get. Yeah, Hong Kong's Eddie Murphy. Yeah, um... pretty much. <laughs> the physical, you know, the physical comedy stylings of yeah, yeah, so sure. equivalent. And absolutely no similarities whatsoever. Youthful, energetic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're both both married to a Spice Girl. Um, Jackie Chan famously married to Baby Spice. 
did oh, was it? I thought it, I thought it was Ginger. No, you're thinking of um, Kurt Douglas. I'm thinking of uh, King Charles, aren't I? King Charles married yeah. to Sporty Spice. Oh, yeah, that was right. Yeah, that, was, that bit of controversy before he settled down with Camilla. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people suggest that his him meeting her was one of the reasons why he had Diana assassinated, <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. Just asking questions. Now. Probably an article on that website you're reading about. It's got something on that. <laughs> be honest with you, the longer the silence goes on, the more guilty they look. Well, yeah. So, Neil. Questions are being asked, but answers aren't forthcoming. That's all I can say. If vampires existed in our modern age, it would be be easy to imagine them in New Orleans. Yeah. Creeping from the shadows of the crypt Sexy in, the French vampires. S- in the St. Louis Cemetery or prowling for victims in the unlit alleyways of the French Quarter. In the Crescent City. Having a beignet. The... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuffing their face with duff on one potatoes. Listen, listening to some jazz. On the... <laughs> <laughs> um, in the Crescent City, beauty and darkness go hand in hand. Very much like this podcast. Mm, yeah. And sure. history steps to steps forward to make itself known in the present day. Ancient Very legends of these. Hmm. I'm liking the cut of this right chip. Yes, yeah, nice, isn't it? Ancient legends of these immortal creatures made their way to America along with immigrants and adapted to the new land. One of the New Orleans' most enduring vampiric legends has its roots in old European folklore. Very nice. According to the stories, sometime in the early 1900s, a mysterious man arrived in New Orleans under the name of Jacques Saint-Germain. Handsome, elegant, wealthy, entertaining, extravagant, mysterious, and a bit curious, his reputation preceded him. And he was soon a hit in New Orleans society. Good to know. (laughs) The eccentric... Sounds like an intriguing character. He does. He sounds like the French magician from... Uh, uh, Pascalita. Pascalita. The eccentric... Maybe he was. Could have been the same guy. We do not know. The eccentric Jacques Saint-Germain is said to have taken residence at the home located at 1039 Royal Street. Saint-Germain was apparently a cavalier and quite the ladies' man. Ooh. Frequently seen with a beautiful woman on his arm while strolling through the French quarter or clubbing in elegant locales late into the night. He delighted in throwing elaborate dinner parties for the city societies. Oh, Not about that yeah. much in a day, though, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah. It didn't see a lot of him before the evening. I must um, yeah, oh, the city oh, social. Now that I think of it. Socialites, I should have said, not societies. Yeah. His parties were hugely anticipated due to their lavish cuisines, fine wines, and entertainment. Well, he didn't seem to eat or drink much himself. No, no, think of it. He always had a glass of red stuff. Mm. Mm. Most relish, however, was his own conversation. Oh. Saint Germain fascinated his guests with stories oh, quite the of France, Italy, Africa, and even Egypt. Ooh. Nice little house out on the corner. Double aspect. Got a little picture of it there. So visitors were delighted and amused by his eloquent grasp of the English language. They were a bit confused, however, when he spoke of events hundreds of years in the past in such precise details, although him himself had participated. Ooh. <laughs> Many guests place little value in the truth of his tales, simply embracing them for the entertainment value during visits uh, to his home. Just a few tall tales, you know. What's that on? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, French Revolution. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Uh, so, not long. Was it Agincourt? Yeah, I was Agincourt. What's problem? Yeah, yeah, I built Stonehenge. No yeah. problem. Yeah, simple winch mechanisms. And why it makes such a big deal know. about it. Yeah, I, I took fire from Prometheus. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I was, um, you know, uh, Nikola Tesla. Yes. Do you know what got him interested in electricity? It was, he was stroking his cat and the cat had static on it and it made all sparks jump and he was like, wow, and that got him into Ooh. electricity. So in some ways... Cats are the Prometheus of electricity. 
There you go. As I've always said, Neil. Indeed you have. Finally, I can back it up. So, not long after his arrival to New Orleans, St. Germain claimed he was a direct descendant of the uh, Comte de Saint-Germain, a close friend and servant to King Louis XV in the 18th century. Ooh. His claim aroused scepticism, but his resemblance to the Comte was uncanny. Eagle-eyed guests noted that a portrait... He the could portrait, have him. The portraits never depicted the Comte as older than 40, the same age as Jacques and Germain had appeared since he'd first arrived in New Orleans. Mm, interesting. Is he not ageing, Neil? Well, that's what you've got to ask yourself. Or maybe he's got a portrait in the attic that's looking increasingly frail. Yeah, could be. Could be. But no, he's a vampire, so he's not ageing. Yeah. yeah. Rumours started to spread in jest that Jacques and Germain may in fact be the very celebrated Comte Saint-Germain himself. However, sorry, somehow rendered immortal and ageless. Jacques seemed to, he seemed to enjoy the mystery he had created around his persona and neither confirmed nor denied. I couldn't possibly comment. No. <laughs> no, how silly. I built the pyramid, you know. <laughs> Although Saint-Germain... Catered parties were highly celebrated. The host was said to have relished in his guest satisfactions of the offered feast without partaking himself. Mm. Often standing apart from the table, drinking from a lavish chalice, presumably filled with wine. Presumably. What else would he be drinking? <laughs> mm. During dinner, he offered fantastical recollections of his adventures for his guests' enjoyments. The very strange habits of not partaking in meals at his own soirees, coupled with his remarkable resemblance to the Comte Saint-Germain, had some in the city suggesting in good fun that perhaps the mysterious man was in fact a vampire. Mm. I mean, how much were all of those kind of myths and stuff known at that time? The early 19th, so turn of the century. Yeah, I mean, um, Bram Stoker's vampire came out in the late 1800s, didn't it? So, yeah, because he kind of set a lot of the template. But I mean, that, I don't know, I, I don't know how much of it is kind of like, um, well, vampires have been known in folklore. Oh, yeah, no, no, I know they've been in folklore for centuries, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I just wonder how much of it is kind of like would have been known or, you know. Well, I think that it probably would have been quite a hot book around that time. You okay. know, it'd be like, um, do you think they are taking it from Bram Stoker then? Probably, because of the... Because you know, yeah. he can go out in daylight and stuff, I seem to remember. I read directly mm. years ago, but he does. Well, there's nothing to suggest that he does that this... Um, that this lab isn't either, yeah. No. Um, the vampires at the time would have been the equivalent to... Uh, Bram Stoker's record would have been the equivalent to TikTok today, or Bubble Tea. Yeah. Been all the rage. Couldn't put it down. Coronated chicken. Nice. A sinister turn of events. These rumours took a sinister turn several months after St. Germain's arrival in New Orleans when the police were called to St. Germain's home to investigate the circumstance leading to a woman who had seemingly fallen from his gallery, a full story above. Ooh. His guest, a woman who was rumoured to have been a prostitute, I mean, I, I always just... They always rumour people's women to be yeah. prostitutes back then if they weren't highfalutin, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, who knows? So she had, in if fact... If she wasn't married, then... Uh, that's yeah, prostitute, yeah. definitely. Had, in fact, leapt from his balcony rather than fallen, as bystanders has originally summarised. While she survived the fall, she was terrified. Ooh. People on the street surrounded her and tended to her needs while the help was rounded. Hysterical, the woman ranted that she had jumped to escape St. Germain, who had bitten her on the neck. Ugh. She screamed and sobbed out the story. Lad. Yeah, Randy Posh lad. Claiming she was only able to escape when uh, her assailant when briefly distracted by a rather loud knocking at his door. So, did I mean, did does she have a bite mark on her neck? <laughs> That's what you look for, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, woman, go and examine his mouth, you know. Yeah. The woman was taken to hospital. Yeah. Well, you can think of a retractable, oh, aren't very, they? Very... Oh, is that, is that how it works? Probably. But again, not sure. 
The woman was taken to hospital as soon as possible, and the police, suspecting she had become delusional... She's got told... vapours, isn't it? Yeah, she's got vapours. Oh, I do declare. Told the very well-known, affluent and respected St Germain not to bother coming in for questioning at this late hour, but rather to please visit the police station in the morning and go over the accounts of the evening. The police were confident that there was a reasonable explanation of for everything. Were, yeah. Hey, what a rich lad. They don't do anything bad. Yeah, they don't do anything wrong. Yeah. They'll be fine. If they do, it's for a good reason. So, you know. But, Neil, the next morning, St Germain never appeared at the police station. <gasps> In fact, to everyone's chagrin... He so com- a cat all along? He had completely vanished overnight, leaving the majority of his belongings behind. Had a sudden bat problem, though, for some reason. <laughs> uh... Legend suggests that upon breaking into his house, the police were cautious and in great anticipation of what they may encounter. On the second floor of the house, they discovered a series of open but corked wine bottles. Upon closer investigation, they discovered the large collection of bottles were filled with a terrifying mixture of wine, along with large quantities of human blood. See, I I didn't... Can vampires drink more than if there's blood in it, then? Mm. So I was thinking, if it's just blood, it's going to clot in it. Yeah, so that's why you got to mix it in with the wine. You've got to mix it in with the wine, but I didn't think they could. make black pudding. That's true. Yeah, I, I didn't think vampires could drink, you know. could. They can't. I, I, I've never heard that they can only drink blood. don't know. Well, I thought, anyway, I thought it was, you know, you wanted it fresh from a kill man being as well, I would have thought. But Yeah, I, I, know, I know, but, you know, needs must. Yeah, I suppose. You know. Well, he's making an attempt to fit, isn't he, to be fair? Exactly. Jack St. Germain was never seen again. Mm-hmm. He, he disappeared just as mysteriously as he had arrived. As one can only imagine, his contemporaries were shocked at the scandal, feeling both betrayed and fooled, and probably a little disappointed that the fun had come to an end. Looks that the party's over. He's very much like a vampire Great Gatsby, isn't he? Yeah. Didn't Great Gatsby just die, though, in a crash? Uh... Yeah, he basically, well, he he was... Um, I've read it. I didn't think it was a particularly great book. Yeah, it's all right. Basically, yeah, he's. I mean, he's he's in love with... Um, there's the yeah. posh, the really uber posh guy. He effectively engineers things so that he gets shot in his pool by, um, like, posh lad actually runs down or runs down somebody's wife and then yeah. he convinces this guy that the Gatsby had done it. He got away and he, he, he knocked her down by accident, and so he got a mechanic and... or something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Kevin's wife. Yeah, so basically, he gets him killed by proxy, sort of thing. Lovely. There you go. Way to do it, isn't it? Spoiler for the gate, Great Gatsby for you. Tom Buchanan, I think his name was, wasn't it? The posh lad. Yeah. So, Jackson Talking Germain. Talking posh lads. Jackson yeah, Germain. Jacques... Yeah. Or the Comte de Saint Germain. Oh, mm. yeah. Mm. Saint Germain, of course, an area of Paris. I'm getting like heavy Matt Barry vibes from uh, what we do in the shadows there. <laughs> yeah, you like Paris, don't you? Now, have you oh, come nice around city. Saint Germain before? Um, I don't know. I'm not that familiar. Whereabouts is it? Did it say quite central Saint Germain? Oh, okay. Um, I'll look this up. Yeah, I'm sure I've been around. It's your favourite saying... place, isn't it? Um, it's one of my favourite places. Yeah, I think there's a lot to there's a lot to see in Paris, and it's very kind of beautiful. Um, Never been now. Never been. Uh, have you not? No. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know... A lot of stuff. The Louvre and stuff like that. There's, a, you know, it's just, yeah, very attractive. A lot of good food. Weather's pretty good. San Germain, let's have a look. Yeah, this is probably a bit... I tend to stay more on the outskirts. Like, last time I went down there... And, um, because, of course, the football Kirk. team, Paris Saint-Germain, her name, is named after the area Saint-Germain. Yeah. Yeah, this would probably be kind of like, yeah, this is be more central. I would normally stay on the sort of, either on the... So, yeah, somewhere or... a bit cheaper, basically. We went, went, went and stayed by the Sacre Coeur last, um, Sacre Coeur last time, which is, um, which is quite a nice area. It's around kind of like... Uh, well, you're so Montmartre, cultured. Where, where all the artists hang out. But it's kind of like it's a bit cheaper. But, uh, mm. Well, you make me feel yeah. like my three-day visit to the uh, Weatherspoons in Romford isn't high class anymore now. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Spain's Chris. So, questions remain unanswered. And this is where the legend of Jacques Saint-Germain as a vampire began to flourish. Had the Comte Saint-Germain of the 1700s made his way to America? Could be. 
20th century New Orleans socialites noted Jackson Germain's resemblance to the 18th century nobleman, the Comte de Saint Germain, and the similarities between the two don't end there. The stories of both Saint Germains clearly parallel each other. Although the elder had a great deal more written material to sink your teeth into, wink wink, so much mystery, speculation and silliness exist in the writings around the Comte's persona that at times one could almost conclude him a fictional character. But for the fact that many affluent leaders and prominent personalities of the time make note of his existence. Ooh. A letter from Horace Walpole, the fourth Earl of Oxford, to his friend Horace Mann provides the first unchallenged reference to Saint Germain. Sorry, my cat's going mad. Mm. You doing? Stop it. Sorry about that. You're right. My cats are going a bit weird at the moment because it's spring, because you brought spring. So yeah, well, going a bit crazy. Like so, um, an odd man who goes by the name of Comte de Saint Germain. He has been here these two years and will not tell who he is or whence but professes that he does not go by his right name. He sings, plays on the violin wonderfully, composes, is mad and not very sensible. He is called an Italian, a Spaniard, a Pole, and somebody married a great fortune in Mexico, but ran away with the jewels to Constantinople. A priest, a fiddler, a vast nobleman, the Prince of Wales has had uns as an ha the Prince of Wales has an unsated curiosity about him, but in vain. Oh, I reckon he could be a Highlander. I don't never mind a uh, vampire. Yeah, maybe. With no official birth <laughs> records available, the two origins of the Comte Saint Germain are a matter of some disagreement amongst historians. Prominent nineteenth century uh, theosophist, a branch of occultism. Uh, Isabel Cooper Oakley alludes in her book that the Comte Saint Germain, The Secret of Kings, that he was most likely born in uh, Lensmoritz in Bohemia at the end of the 17th century and is said to have been the youngest son of Prince Franz Leopold Ragoxi of Transylvania and the Prince Charlotte Amelia mm. of Hesse Wanfried. He's coming from the right area then. Yeah, tell me about it. Where you get it. vampires from. Maze. Because of the tumultuous political environment at the time, it is said that as an infant, he was placed under the care of the last Medici family, Gian Gastone, which may have speculated, which many have speculated, may have contributed to his very rich education. Well, he got around a bit. He was hanging around with the Medici's. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one of those... Like, the Pope as well. Yeah, one of those rich playboys and all that. Yeah. Getting pushed oh, around Europe, the goes, to, yeah. goes to England for a bit. Prince of yeah. Wales license. Meets the Prime Minister's son. Yeah. It don't get on that well, but there you go. Yeah, but the Prince of Wales really likes him, so he's yeah. in. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. I'm wondering, would it have been George the Fifth or whatever, who was the Prince of Wales at the time, who built the stuff down in Brighton? Because he was oh, a bit of a Prince... fucking nutter anyway, wasn't he? He probably would have loved this guy. Prince Regent. Could yeah, have been. Maybe. Not sure. What, what what era are we talking about, roughly? Uh, Could have been. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Anyway. Yeah. Since that publication, many later writers have repeated his beginnings as a ragoxy, uh, as a fact. However, in the very well-researched work, the Comte Saint-Germain, last scion of the House of Racoxi, author Jean Overton Fuller confirms that it's only speculation. More strange stories of the Comte de Saint-Germain. Saint-Germain's refusal to give his true name, except to the King of France, Louis XV, seems to indicate that he was protecting some house of royalty. While it was common to use many titles in that day and age, it was highly unusual and suspect not to give one's true identity when asked by a figure of authority. Mm. However, the acceptance of his presence so close to the king also indicates that the king was satisfied with explanation of his origins. Also, the king was mad with syphilis. I've added that bit. Yeah. <laughs> Things aren't always great arbiters of what's right, but there no. you go. 
Very much like Jacques Saint-Germain in New Orleans, the Comte Saint-Germain spun fantastical tales reportedly claimed to have had conversations with Cleopatra and the Queen of Sheba and professed to have been present during remarkable historical milestones, many which took place over 500 years prior. <laughs> I mean, it almost sounds like this second guy has read about the first guy and gone, well, if it worked for him, yep. do, do you know what I mean? Fake it till you make it. No, nick his second name and then yep. like, do, do the same shtick. It's been done elsewhere, isn't it? Yeah. You hear every so often somebody sort of like pretends they're some, from some whatever. Yeah, like the fake Pre- heiress or whatever. Yeah. A recent one. Yeah, I, I forget the lady's name, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Cooperoakley explains that some historical confusion surrounding Comte's claims stems from his tremendous use of a variety of titles as was customary at the time, a custom that was tolerated in French society to present to present that one was not simply a commoner, but rather came from some service to the king. The Comte Saint-Germain is said to have been an aristocrat with no profession, however he certainly must have profited from his association with King Louis XV of France, as well as his diplomatic involvement with other political leaders. In fact, it was his ability to produce funds in abundance whenever necessary that had him under suspicion of being a spy. Mm, or a vampire. Or a vampire. King the, don't care as long as he's getting paid. As long as he's exactly. getting beat wet, Louis, Louis XV <laughs> thing, even a shit. As long as I get my cut. Uh, stories also say that the Comte Saint-Germain was... Uh, well accomplished in a vast variety of areas. He was ambidextrous, a great musician, a linguist, a noted alchemist. There are countless... A noted alchemist. Yeah, a noted alchemist. Yeah, I don't think um... anyone actually managed to turn lead into gold in my recollection, Chris. No. Maybe, but... maybe this one cracked it. That's where I know that money. Well, it's alchemist... no use, isn't it? You just don't tell anyone once you've done it. Yeah, I mean, he got the. He managed to make a philosopher's stone the gold. and then yeah. hold all the gold. Nice. Uh, there are countless tales of him. At uh, participating diamonds out of thin air or changing worthless stones into precious jewels, manipulating metal into gold, fine-tuning imperfect diamonds into fused masterpieces and creating an elixir of life. Again, all powers that the vampires had. Which yeah. is very much on the Anne Rice side of the vampire. <laughs> In many of his circles uh, at the time, uh, felt he must have been responsible for his own youthful appearance and health. So he just sounds like a really good con man. Yep. Perhaps there is only one Saint Germain, and he has lived across centuries, ageless and with no need for nourishment, but the curious mixture of wine and human blood discovered in his rapidly abandoned house in New Orleans. So um, there's also there was also in the 1970s a man called Richard uh, Chanfrey who claimed, still knocking about who claimed. To be the count, that's fun, isn't it? Do you have any basis for that, or a, a brass neck? Yeah, well, oh, definitely. Yeah, did it look like him, or does it, does it give any other details, or just some guy claimed? But there's a picture so of him. This is a guy in the seventies who claimed he was the same guy, basically. Yeah, and the thing, you know, in the seventies, so this, this guy had a lot from... of stuff going on. There was like Operation Mindfuck and a lot of LSD and all that kind of stuff. So. You know. Oh yeah, well it could be very. I mean, it could just been good somebody making it up, couldn't it? But uh, no, I was just wondering. Yeah, if there's anything to substantiate his tale. Yeah, so um, Sir Germain is well known. And we can all claim to be four hundred year old vampires, Chris. Well, you do very regularly. Oh well, yeah. Uh, he's going to have to start listing one of these days. Bring some proof to the table. Um, he's, he's, uh, so, he, so he's a well, like to. so he's a well known figure of urban legend in New Orleans. So and even up to now. There are supposed sightings and attacks being attributed to him by locals. He's still hanging about. He's not gone. He's not slung his up and gone elsewhere. No, it um, sounds like he was. He was pretty much out and about and going going all over yeah. the place beforehand. And according to the urban legends surrounding Saint Germain, he has reappeared throughout history, having never aged. And the legend has inspired cocktails. And his reputed residence on Royal Street has become a tourist attraction. Attraction. The legend of Saint Germain was featured on Mysteries Decoded in the season one episode of The Vampires of New Orleans. Mm. So it was clearly settled down in New Orleans. Family liked it, you know. He's done wondering. It's like, well, like um, my forever home. Like um, vampire is a big deal. 
what's his name from Pre Preacher, the vampire? Oh, Cassidy, was it? Yeah, Cassidy, yeah. He said it was in New Orleans, didn't he? Yeah, that vaguely rings a bell. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I read that years and years ago. So I think that's pretty much the story, Neil. It's a, it's a full oh, it legend, isn't it? It is, yeah. So how much of that? I mean, it's quite an interesting one. So um, so presumably those uh, those reports are sort of reasonably substantiated I mean, from quite a while back. But, yeah. Um, yeah, this was a real, per- you know, there was a real, yes. obviously there was a real kind of like person living in this part of New Orleans and stuff. Yeah, uh, there, there, was, there was a woman who jumped yeah. off the balcony and made claims and he disappeared. Yeah, and then he sorted off afterwards, yeah. Yeah. Mm, intriguing. Mm. So shall we go through our scoring system? Why not? So, Neil, spookiness. Um, spookiness. I mean, he, yeah, he's just kind of like, we've only sort of got the one victim, haven't we? So it's a bit hard to know. I mean, most yeah. of what he's, I say, he seems a bit great Gatsby. He seems to be more kind of like wanting to be liked and, you know, a bit of, a, you know, just enjoying society and all the rest of it. I mean, it makes you wonder why he kind of blew his cover. I mean, he, he obviously had some way of, um, you know, being able to, I don't know, uh, get hold get of blood or whatever. Because yeah. if you've been there for years, building up a reputation, kind of enjoying society and all the rest of it, wonder why he suddenly decided he had to. Um, well, they may, I don't know, maybe he was off, supposedly off people on the floor. Anyway, yeah. So what I'm basically trying to say is, it doesn't seem that big to me because I'm not sure. It mostly just seems to be sort of like uh, entertaining people with uh, dinners. Yeah, and a bit of raconteur. Yeah, you know, a bit of a bit of a social and the rest of it. So, um, yeah. Um, although maybe you know, there's people disappearing on the sides. So I'm not sure. He's always, you know, he's not. Not hunting after um, rich people, but um, yeah, I mean the yeah. thing is, like people can go missing back in those days, yeah. and if they were poor, you know, no one gave a shit. No, so. no, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it was vampires are reasonably spooky, I suppose. I'll give it a five. Five. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't find him particularly spooky because you're not hearing of him attacking people and that kind of jazz even when i don't know like i'd, I'd be more intrigued i'd be like all right so how are you getting like did you create this elixir of life is that how you're is it the vampirism and essentially what do i need to do to get hold of some do you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> um but yeah i don't know it, it just sounds like quite a good company to be honest um i guess it I guess it's all it's all fun until you become the target. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But um, it doesn't it doesn't seem like there was you know it's not like you had coffins and like there was like a spate of disappearances or anything that we know of. But I mean, there could well have been. I mean, I'm going to have to go five as well, Neil, because I think that what we're hearing about is all the socialite stuff, but we don't yeah. actually know if there was. We just we it's not suggesting that. that there was a spate of murders or anything, but. You know, would that have been necessarily reported if it was Indeed. poor people? Indeed. So, um, believability. Well, both of the Saint Germain characters existed. You know, whether they were vampires or not is another story. Um, and it kind of sounds like the people at the time didn't think he was a vampire. They were kind of like joking about yeah. it because it was like vampires were sort of a new thing in vogue. And it's kind of from there kind of the legends kind of set and also not helped by the fact that some woman claimed that she would be bitten and he and he basically just bolted. Yeah, yeah. But um I th- I mean it sounds like there was this character, the kind of sort of a bit of a con man, like a couple of hundred years before. And then maybe this guy going over to the New World was like, I'm gonna use this guy's surname and I'm gonna try the same thing, give my old stories and that and yeah. be like a bit mysterious. Have a bit of fun with it. So, I mean, that's what it sounds like probably happened. Um, but certainly existed. I'm not sure that people believed he was a vampire, but I mean, some people do. There's been some books written on it. So I'm going to give it an eight nil for believability because the 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 character involved is real. Okay, that's quite high. Um, yeah, I guess it's depending on what we're talking about. I mean, believability, isn't it? Um, you know, uh, as you say. Even the people around at the time didn't necessarily think that he was a vampire. I mean, and he, you know, even if he was drinking blood or whatever, I mean, I don't know. I don't. It doesn't. It could have just been like a, some Marquis de Sade kind of situation. Um, yeah, good like Torturing people, but um, well, I mean, it could have been cow's blood or something. You don't know, pig's yeah, blood. Yeah, we, we we don't know. We don't know. 
Um, and yeah, you know, he, he might have attacked somebody, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you know, he might, might have been a vampiric intent. It might have just been like some some creep. But um, mm. who knows? Uh, yeah. So well, I'll, I'll, yeah, as you say, though, there's a lot of documentary evidence around him having existence. I'll give it a six. Six. Narrative premise, Neil. Yeah, I think this. I, I think this is quite interesting, and I wonder if Anne Rice kind of um, used this as the basis of some of the stories that she did. So there's this whole, you know, they had that kind of whole idea of, with the interview of the vampire and stuff, where they've got. I mean, I think specifically, actually, they do go over to New Orleans from kind of like um, France, um, and then you, you know, you have this whole idea of them coming over to the New World, and um, yeah, it's you know, and then they're like living long lives and being quite travel and stuff like that. So I think it's quite an interesting kind of twist on the whole kind of vampire mythos better than you know sparkly ones that yeah you know mean over high school girls or whatever those are the latest trend to, I mean, that's probably about 20 years out of day um current fashions but uh but yeah no i think it's it's quite you know they've they've those kind of things it's you know vampires never kind of quite go out of fashion so yeah i think it's quite a what's wrong and i think you know yeah that you know people living for for a long time and they're also like that they're not um they don't sort of confirm whether he's a vampire or not. They just yeah. like enough. They leave it open. So I think you've got to, you know, you can, I think that's a good, that's good for the narrative. So I'm going to give it a, an eight. Eight. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, um, I like, yeah, I like the sort of immortality part of it. And the fact that, you know, that it, the same person could have been kicking around previously. And then, yeah, that, so that, that seems quite new to me for the story at the time. Um, although you know it's a bit more, it's a bit more kind of used nowadays. But I, I yeah. think I think it's quite a fresh look at the vampire thing. Um, it's very different to the sort of Bram Stoker and Vlad the Impaler stuff. More kind of effete, sort of charming vampire. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, you know New Orleans is kind of the the new world setting for vampirism, isn't it? Mm, yes. Yeah. So, and that's still, still come true, true to today. So, um, yeah, I don't mind it. So I'm going to give it a seven nil. So, yes. um, reach. Um, so I think it, if you're into vampires, I think it'd be well known. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's been in a lot of, other, you know, there's been there's been a couple of books and there's been it's been like in a documentary, okay. But it doesn't seem like it's kind of it doesn't seem like a massive story outside of New Orleans, if you know what I mean. No, no. I mean, there's plenty of stuff about it on the web, yeah, um, more than kind of most. But I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know. I can't give it too high. Um, so, but it's endured a bit as well. But I'm I'm just going to give it a five now. Yeah, I think similar for me. It doesn't feel like it's. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've not heard of it, and I don't I don't know how well known it would be outside of fit like and relating to all of these things. It might have influenced some other bits and pieces, but um, I don't know. It might not. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I think it's a four for me for similar reasons. Well, so that gives us an overall score of forty-eight. Not too bad. Nice. Um, so if you are a vampire and want to get in touch to clear all this up, we'll give you a right to reply at uh, dot legends dot podcast at gmail.com. Leave us a whatever, a re- you know, a nice comment or something if you have time on your travels through the podcast kingdom. Invite us to one of your parties. Yeah, invite us to one of your parties. Why not? We'll yeah, be we're, open, we're open-minded. Get suited up. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I don't drink alcohol anymore, so I'll just stick to the blood if that's yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, um, so that'll probably be the last vampire one for this series, anyway. We've that given it a go, Neil. We've but we keep banging at the door and we'll see yeah. if people like it. <laughs> one of them, one of them's gonna hit, one of them will yeah. hit, it'll be our breakthrough hit. Um, but that's it for this week. Um, I hope you uh have a nice uh rest of the rest of the week, and I hope you've enjoyed March of this year. I guess it's been quite, quite. Quite quiet so far this year compared to previous, but actually thinking about it, it hasn't. Um, it's just that we've got like hyper awareness now because the last few years have been so crazy. Yeah. Um yeah, on that positive note, um, I uh hope you're all well and have a nice one. And uh we'll be back same time next week and I'm gonna stop blathering on. Goodbye. Goodbye. And then I- 